Hi, it's Gil McNeil. We're at Birkeland Gardens again, and we're going to talk a little bit about what dwarf conifers are, and we say sometimes dwarf and unusual conifers. Conifers are cone-bearing trees, um, typically evergreen, but not always. There's a few that aren't. There's the, the, the genus and the species of these trees, and and then there's unusual ones that that are found, typically found in seedling batches, a lot of times in uh, places that grow large numbers of trees for forestry or Christmas trees, things like that, and they'll they'll find these unusual anomalies growing in their big seedling batches and pick them out and grow them on for uh, a number of years, and typically it takes about between five and ten years to make sure that it's worthy to come to, to trade, so usually closer to ten years. In addition to uh, finding unusual seedlings in these large batches, there's what's called witch's brooms, and witch's brooms are typically found, grow, it's a growth found growing in a species of a tree. Usually these are what we would call more the miniature and small dwarf uh, conifers, and they're congested growths that grow in the tree. The, some of that wood would be harvested, uh, taken off just small chunks of, of that wood and then grafted to continue um, just like you would with uh, the seedlings. Uh, grafting is the typical way that propagation is done with both the seedling selections and the witch's brooms. So the conifers can be used in a variety of ways in the landscape. They're very versatile. Um, there's different sizes and colors and shapes. They're also, like I said, typically evergreen, and but the deciduous ones that have the, their interest as well. So um, a lot of times the ones that are golden in color will be gold in the wintertime, so that provides winter wintertime interest. We're gonna we'll just kind of talk about um, these and I can add a little more about texture and, and the design, designing with conifers as well. So I'll just go ahead and start with this uh, this conifer right here, which is a, one of the deciduous conifers. A, it's a larch. Um, it is a type of larch and it has a special name called Walter Dingen. And uh, Walter Dingen would be a slow growing larch. Um, they're going to lose all their needles in, in the wintertime. Um, they flush out with this nice green color in the in the springtime. They'll darken up a little bit as they grow th throughout the uh, season. The summer season has a nice shape. Lots of, lots of interest in the garden. I like all pretty much all of the larches. So and there's lots of cultivars out there. So something a little more on the miniature side is this mugo pine. Um, it just grows an inch or less a year. The candles are just about fully grown now and the candles are that new growth and that comes out every year and then a very tight branching and short growth creates a very dense plant and it'll be low to the ground. This one's called Neurost WB. So the scotch pine, little brol, it's uh, not quite a miniature, but a small dwarf, which uh, in that one to six inch category, where it's on the small end, one and a half to two inches of growth here. So pretty small. People could call it a miniature, but it's a, a small dwarf with uh, lots of new candles on it. There's a number of gold mugo pines. This one's called Winter Sawn, S-O-N-N-E. It has a nice columnar look to it. A nice gold, denser, um, a really nice plant. Uh, Winter Song would be in that dwarf category, about you know three inches a year growth. So we're going to move on to a couple of cedrus, the true cedars. Um, cedars have it's a common name applied to quite a few different plants. We have a western red cedar here in our area in, in the Pacific Northwest. So this cedrus is a, a Diodora cedar and it's called Divinely Blue. Typically plants are rated by their their growth and a lot of times you'll get the 10-year growth on this one. This one should be three to four feet tall 
and 10 years and four to five feet wide. So it's broad at the bottom. It is conical in shape. So it has a, and very dense with that really nice blue color. So it's a, um, that'll be a nice plant in the landscape that's going to show um, blues and golds along with your greens. So I have another type of cedrus, cedrus labani. This one's called katir. It is very slow growing. It could be a, a small dwarf or considered a miniature possibly as well. So grows pretty flat, has nice texture. The green color is, is really nice on this one. So there's another one very similar to it. It's called hedgehog that grows in a similar fashion, slightly different. Both really nice plants in the garden. So a couple of plants that again are deciduous. The ginkgos is somewhat related to the conifers, um, but not totally. So it's considered an ancient plant, uh, deciduous, and but we, we have it with our conifers and, and um, people enjoy them. It has a nice shaped leaf. Um, this particular one is called autumn gold. It'll get a nice gold color in the, in the fall. So we've talked about this plant before. It's a uh, Don Redwood or Metasequoia glyptostroboides. Uh, this particular cultivar is called Gold Rush. Um, it gets to be a pretty large tree, close to the species size. A um, little bit slower growing, maybe a little bit narrower. I would say narrower, but um, it has the best gold color, I think, in the garden. It's pretty dramatic. Uh, you know, there's one here, uh, pretty tall one 40 plus feet uh, on the property and then I have a couple on my own property that are uh, 25 feet plus in height and, uh, and in the summertime after spring and summer when they're coming out in this gold color they're pretty dramatic color so again a deciduous conifer um, but well worth uh, having in your garden for that summertime color. I have one spruce here today um, it is a uh, Picea glauca Sanders blue so it's a white spruce and but with a blue color something very conical you'll see a lot of these used as Christmas trees but this particular blue one is a cultivar and it, uh, it has a nice blue blue color and the foliage is has an immature look so when the needles first come out after the seed germinates of a tree the first seeds that are the first needles that come out are a little different looking than the, the needles that you'll see on the tree as it starts to mature. So the first, and uh, we call that immature juvenile foliage. So this one never grows out of its juvenile foliage. It has that throughout its entire life. I'm going to talk about this Douglas fir. It is, um, we talked about quite a few miniature and small dwarfs. Um, this Douglas fir, which is Pseudosubia menzieses, and this particular cultivar is called Graceful Grace. It has a nice gray-green, uh, almost a little bit of a blue tinge to it. And it's a weeping one, so you stake it for height. And it'll grow pretty vigorously, 12 inches or more a year, with all the branches hanging down pendulous. So um, in the landscape, we talk about different textures and the way things look. Having weeping things along with uh, all your other types of uh, uh, growths and textures is, is very interesting. So I think this is uh, uh, a great plant in the Pacific Northwest. Douglas fir or Pseudosuga menzieses is a native tree and a, a, a timber tree that's used. It's one of the strongest woods of any tree that's known, so used in construction. I also want to talk about the American Conifer Society a little bit and just I'll just kind of mention them. It's a nonprofit organization with around, I'll say, 2,000 members that promote the, the use of conifers in the garden. Conifer Society also has a great website. It's used by many people, used by arborists and just uh, everyday people to look up conifers and, and you don't have to be a member to uh, use the database. You can be part of the Conifer Society for $40 a year, which is a great deal. And uh, you'll get their quarterly magazine, which is very informative. And we typically have yearly meetings for national and regional. There's four regional 
areas for the society as well. So, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about conifers. And uh, appreciate having you with us today. And in, in late April, it's uh, the weather's getting nicer all the time. I know a lot of people are cooped up, and maybe um, with with the virus and and also. Uh, Gardening is a, a great way to, you know, spend some time, get out in your yard and do some do some things. Uh, we'll be talking about some other subjects coming up, tools used in the garden, soils, and things like that. Yeah, please like, comment, or subscribe to us, uh, our YouTube channel, and um, and there'll be more videos coming.